Hi, my name is Matthew Boyd, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the effects of the Spanish Armada's attack on England in 1588. In this talk, I will, I will be de detailing the long and short-term effects and aftermath of the Spanish Armada's attack on England during the Anglo-Spanish War from 1585 to 1604, and how it affected the two powers. Firstly, I will give you some information on the major people involved in the event, like Elizabeth I, Philip II, and several others. Then I'll go into some background history and history on the two powers. After this, I will detail the build-up of the conflict to the attack, the attack and the battle itself, the aftermath, and then the effects. So on to the major people involved in this page of history. To understand this whole ordeal, you must first know sort of who played the major roles in the event and some information on each of these people. So first and foremost, there was Philip II. He was the King of Spain at the time and had been the King of England as he was married to Mary I. One incredibly important thing was the fact that was he, he was a Catholic. Why is the, the fact that he was a Catholic important, you ask? Well, this fact is central to the reasoning behind the Spanish attack. It is also important to note that he, as a Catholic, did not like Protestants. The second major player in this conflict was, of course, Elizabeth I. After Mary had died, despite the fact that Philip was her husband, Elizabeth had risen to the throne and become Queen of England. This was due to the fact that it was decreed that if Philip was to marry Mary, he could not become king if she died. Queen Elizabeth was a Protestant, as I, and as I said before, this is a very important fact. After those two, there were three other people who played major roles during this war. Those were Sir Francis Drake, Alonso Perez de Guzman, and Charles Howard. Sir Francis Drake was an experienced naval commander who was named second in charge of the English fleet. His actions during the Spanish attack were central to the outcome and effects that it had on the two powers. Guzman was the Sp Spanish first in command, picked by Philip I personally. This man was very experienced in commanding troops in land battles, but not in naval warfare. He was very reluctant to take the position as first commander because of this. However, Philip insisted he do it. Lastly, there was Charles Howard. He was appointed first in command of the English fleet, and he, along with Drake, were chiefly responsible for the victory over the Armada. Okay, so with all that in your head, let's go on to the background history. At the time, the Spanish were a superpower in the world with a vast empire. The New World had opened up and the Spanish had taken full advantage of it and begun colonizing the Americas. As I said before, Philip had been married to Mary. However, after she died, Elizabeth became queen and rejected Philip's offer of marriage. When Elizabeth became queen, one of the first things she did was to establish the English Protestant Church. So the Spanish Empire was peaking in their power during this period. The trade and resources coming in from the New World were feeding Spain's huge economy and they were colonizing new land each year. Militarily, they were one of the strongest powers in the world and their soldiers were regarded as the best. In comparison, the English were a relatively weak power. In comparison, the English were a relatively weak power. They did not have much power. Their leader had been excommunicated, their economy was not very large, and their military strength was not great. Also, very recently, they had bro broken away from the Catholic Church during Henry VIII's rule. So, now with all that background sort of information in your mind, I'm going to talk about the build-up of conflict between the two powers. This war and this battle were primarily caused due to religious reasons, and as I said before, both powers had different religions. With Elizabeth's establishment of the English Protestant Church came the religious conflict. Philip saw her as an Ill illegitimate queen, as Henry VIII was her father, and he had been uh, the one who p had broken away from the Catholic Church. Under Elizabeth's reign, the Catholic people of England were forced to become Protestants or were punished if they were rebelled. As Philip was a very devoted Catholic, he wished to reinstate Catholicism to England and put a Catholic ruler back on the throne of England and abolish the Protestant Church. When Protestant rebellions began to occur in the Netherlands, Philip endeavoured to suppress these revolts. Elizabeth, however, continually sent troops and support to these rebels to protect them and even signed a treaty with them. The signing of this treaty was a turning point which issued Philip to create plans to invade England. 
Although primarily religious conflict caused the war, attacks on raids on Spanish trade ships and colonies by English sailors had also contributed. Elizabeth, although officially condemning these attacks, secretly supported them as they brought huge profits for the English treasury, which was, which was in need of money. So now let's talk about the build-up to the Armada's attack. With Philip's decision to finally attack England, plans were drawn up to send a huge armada with an invasion force which, run, which would rendezvous with the Duke of Parma and his troops. It is unlikely that the invasion force was sent to conquer England and add it to the empire as it would have been incredibly difficult to suppress England as it is a faraway na island nation with a large populace. Philip took charge to plan the attack even though he had little military experience and during his planning he did not listen to his military commanders. Word quickly reached the English that an attack was imminent so the English began to prepare. Signal beacons were stationed all along the English and Welsh coastlines, which would allow word of an incoming attack to reach London very quickly. The English also sent a preemptive attack on the Armada when the fleet was stationed at Cadiz. Francis Drake, leading the expedition, was able to surprise the Spanish Armada, then burn and sink a number of ships and still manage to get away. This attack, however, did not do any major damage to the Spanish plans and simply delayed them for a year. The preparations began as early as 1584 and Philip appointed the Duke of Medina Siuna Alonso Perez de Guzman as his first commander who, if you remember, did not have great experience in naval warfare. Around 130 ships were outfitted for the Armada, however a large proportion of these ships were troop transports which were not built for naval warfare. These transport ships were incredibly slow ships and did not have great manoeuvrability. Although the Spanish built this incredibly large armada, the ships were not outfitted as well as the English ships. During May 1588, the armada set sail with 19,000 troops aboard and headed for the Netherlands where they would pick up the 16,000 troops under the command of the Duke of Parma. On the July the 18th, the armada was spotted and the beacons lit, notifying the English of the Spanish arrival. Okay, so... Now that you have an idea of how this conflict came to be and the Spanish plans for the Armada, let's go on to the actual battles and the defeat of the Armada. So first and foremost, so first and foremost, when the Armada arrived, the English ships slipped behind them during the dead of night, which gave them the wind advantage and meant that the Spanish only had one way to travel, which was up the channel unless they defeated the English navy. During the Armada's attack, there were four engagements. The first two ended in two stalemates, and neither side gained any advantage and the Spanish plan was well on its way. The third, however, was a fairly important engagement, as the English were able to gain a victory and drive their armada directly towards Calais, and not allow them to make contact with Palmer's army. The Spanish anchored here in a defensive crescent moon formation and waited to make contact with the army on the mainland. When night came, Francis Drake and Howard decided to deploy fire ships to disrupt the f Spanish formation. So eight ships were set alight and set on their way towards the Armada during the dead of night. Despite having taken precautions against this and warning the captains to stay in formation, even if fire ships were sent, the Spanish ships broke ranks and fled into open order. The English quickly began to engage the disarray of Spanish ships and the Battle of Gravelines ensued. Six Spanish ships were sunk and the Spanish Armada retreated up towards the northern tip of Scotland, being followed closely by the English Navy. What followed was a disaster for the Spanish. They decided to head around Scotland and back to Spain. However, terrible Atlantic storms mixed with deadly coastlines, destroyed several ships and damaged many more, and what was left of the Spanish Armada sailed back to Spain. Well, so with all that in mind, let's talk about the aftermath of this Spanish attack. So, when the Spanish Armada finally managed to return to Spain, only 63 ships managed to return. Out of these ships, several were too badly to be repaired. Not only on this voyage were ships sunk, but approximately 20,000 soldiers and sailors died on the voyage back as disease became rampart and the food stores rotten. In comparison, the English fleet during this attack had only incurred some damage to ships. However, disease had again struck and killed approximately 7,000 sailors. The English had come out relatively well off in this attack and now were able to take the initiative against the Spanish. This victory over the Spanish Armada is one of the greatest in English history and provide a major morale booster for the English during this conflict. 
So onto the effects that the attack caused. On the Spanish side, there were not only negative effects, but also positive ones. So firstly, economically, the destruction of over half the Armada put a large dent in the Spanish economy. As only 63 ships returned from the voyage and several of these were damaged beyond repair, the Spanish lost a lot of money from their ventures and gained nothing back. There was also the fact that 20,000 trained soldiers and sailors died in this venture, which had a large effect socially. The main and lasting and most prominent effects were seen militarily. This crushing blow to their naval strength did not last for long, and when the English Armada attacked the year after, they were able to repel them and crush them, just like the English had done to them. As the English were not able to take their upper hand, the Spanish naval power grew considerably. In the years to follow, two more armadas were built and were sent to invade England. However, on both occasions, they were repelled by the weather. This defeat also constituted a change in the naval tactics, which would carry on throughout the world. The Spanish method of using boarding as their main way of attack was outdated, and now people realized that they could sit back and attack from range with cannons and manage to sink a ship. Employing these new tactics allowed them to give protection to the convoys of money and trade ships sent from the Americas. During the next 10 years, English attacks and raids on Spanish ships and colonies were disastrous in most cases. So now for the effects on the English side. Ec economically, it did not put a large strain on the economy at all, and neither did it benefit. Although this was the case, the victory had huge social and religious implications. As the Spanish did not defeat the English nor abolish the Protestant religion which Elizabeth followed, the Protestant church was able to strongly establish and ingrain itself in English society, grow and eventually become what it is today. Also due to this victory, Elizabeth was able to continue in her funding and support of the Protestant rebels in the Netherlands. Militarily, this did give England the initiative. However, as I said before, they failed in the attempt to counterattack the Spanish while they were weak. So with all that in mind, I'm going to lastly talk to you about the effects this battle had on their war and what would have happened if the Spanish had landed. Well, if the Spanish had managed to gain control over the English Channel, the Spanish would have been able to convoy and transport 35,000 troops onto English soil. The Spanish soldiers were renowned as the best in the world, and as the English only had around 20,000 soldiers under their command, it is likely the Spanish would have been able to take control. As I said previously though, it is very unlikely that Philip would have conquered England as it would have been incredibly difficult. Rather, he would have probably made some demands of Elizabeth regarding the Catholic Church or replaced her with someone else who was a Catholic. Lastly, let's go over the effects the attack had on the war. The battle itself really wasn't a decisive encounter at all, as most of the important Ad Atlantic-class ships returned to Spain relatively undamaged, however the Armada was still in need of refitting. refitting. The English failed to take advantage of this in their counter-attack, and the Spanish attack in relation to the Anglo-Spanish war made the Spain a much more powerful as it instituted a change in their naval tactics. So. With all that in mind, it is clear that the Anglo-Spanish War happened primarily due to two reasons. Firstly, there was the religious element to it. Philip was a devoted Catholic, Elizabeth a Protestant, who in Philip's eyes had no legitimacy to be ruling England and should be removed from the throne. There was also the fact that Elizabeth was helping the Protestant rebels in the Netherlands who Philip was trying to crush. The second main element that caused the conflict was the English raids and attacks on Spanish trade ships and colonies. The attack of the Spanish Armada left the English with a triumphant victory, which is today regarded as one of their greatest victories in history. The effects of this battle were enormous as it led to a change in naval tactics which would eventually lead to the British becoming a superpower of the world because of this advancement. There were several other short-term effects, however this was definitely the largest and most significant. I am Matthew Boyd and thank you for listening.